Hi everyone, it's Lisa. Thank you so much for joining me today. In today's video, I am going to walk you through a tutorial of how I made this summer mini album. It's using the Simple Stories Snap Binder and it's using the Sunkist collection, which is their brand new collection for the summer of 2021. So I'm just gonna start out by just showing you a walkthrough of the completed album. So a lot of these um, pages are flips. I did put a lot of fun flips in this album just because I wanted to make it more interactive and I think that the interactive elements are so much fun. And by adding these interactive pages with all of these flips, it enables you to add a lot more photos to your album. And this album actually has 99 photos in it, and I could have added a lot more. So you can see that I've used the 12 by 12 paper pad, including some of the tags and the papers. I've also used the six by eight paper pad in here, as well as the ephemera, the frames and tags um, ephemera pack, as well as the foam stickers and the sticker book. And what I did is I just basically am documenting a summer trip that I took two years ago with my family. It was celebrating my 20 year anniversary and we decided to go to Atlantis in the Bahamas. And I never had a chance to put those pictures in an album. So I thought that this collection was so much fun and I wanted to use this collection to document that trip that we took. Now, yes, this collection is summer themed, but it doesn't necessarily have to be beach themed or pool themed. It could be for anything in the summer. And that's what's so fun about this Simple Stories collection is because you can actually document several of your summer photos. It doesn't have to be just one trip or one specific thing. It could be several of your different summers put together in a album like this. Now, some of the things I have to come back in here and document, you saw that there was a sheet that showed favorites and there was nothing listed. So I will come back in here and just add some journaling in here as well. But that was the layout and the basic structure of the album that I'm going to create with you in this video tutorial. So here I'm just showing you some of the things in the collection that I picked up and I do have a complete craft haul video which I will link down below and it shows all of this collection in detail so I'm just going through it pretty quickly just so you can see in case you missed that video but if you want to see it in length you can go back and watch that video where I'll show you all of the ephemera pieces laid out and a flip through of the sticker book and just everything in the collection. So here is the binder that I picked up and I did decide to use the yellow binder and it comes with all of these pages. So there's some journaling pages, some chipboard separator pages there. There's also some inserts that you can put pictures in. So I wanna start out by decorating the front cover of the album. So I have this piece of 12 by 12 sun paper and I'm gonna cut it down to six and one eighth by eight and one half. And since this is a directional paper, you'll want to make sure that you cut that six and one eighth down the middle of the paper with the suns facing the right direction. And then I'm going to back that up on a piece of white cardstock that's six and a quarter by eight and five eighths, which I did the cutting of that off camera. Next, I will take a border die from the Stamps of Life, and I'm also using the Ginger Snap cardstock from the Stamps of Life, and I'm just going to die cut this border out of the cardstock. And you'll see that the actual cut, it's gonna be too short for the width of this um, page. So you can see that I'll have some extra space here on the left hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that die and I'm just going to place it where the first die cut left off and just add some washi tape there to hold it down. After I run that through my die cut a second time, then I will have a much longer border to work with to fill the entire width of this front of the album page. So here I'm just going to snip off the sides and I'm going to work with this large piece here. You'll see that I'll have extra but I can just save that for another project. So I'm going to be creating a little beach scene on the front of this album. So that 
um, border is going to represent the sand in my beach scene and I'm going to be using the island to visit stamp set from the stamps of life and in that set is a stamp that you can use to put little dots on your paper which represent um, dimension for sand. So I'm just taking a darker ink, this is the chocolate ink from the Stamps of Life, and I'm just using that sand stamp and tapping down all of these little dots on this cardstock. Now if you don't have a stamp like this, you can always just take a brown marker. I have used Copic markers in the past to do the same thing. You can take a darker marker and put darker spots, mix it up with a lighter marker so that you have various colors and various dimension, but always in the brown color category. So a light brown, a dark brown, maybe even a medium tone, and that would do the trick as well. So here I'm using the Ginger Snap ink from the Stamps of Life and I'm just inking up the edges of this sand just to add some more texture and dimension and then I'm just going to take my brush and I'm just going to tap it on the top of this cardstock for some added color and added dimension. Next, I'm going to add glue to the back. Now, I'm not going to use that whole piece because I did have a larger piece that I needed. So I'm just going to put some glue towards the top of the back of that Ginger Snap cardstock, flip it over, and then just press that down. And then all of that extra cardstock, I'll just snip off with my scissors. And once all of that's cut off, I'll go back in with my chocolate ink and add some of the sand splotches there towards the bottom because I didn't add them far enough down initially. And then I'm just taking my Ginger Snap ink and I'm just adding some of the ink around the sides and the bottom of that sand. Now I'm just going to lay out some of these ephemera pieces. This is from the Sunkiss Collection by Simple Stories. It's their ephemera pack. And I'm just going to lay, lay out a little scene here at the bottom of this paper. And once I have everything where I want it, I'll go ahead and add glue to the backs of all of these pieces and add them directly to the front. Now this is just like a scene that I would create on a typical card front, but here I'm just doing it as a larger scale on the front of this album. So I think creating these scenes are so much fun to do when you have all of these cute ephemera pieces to work with. So I also take the sticker book, and this sticker book is amazing. It has so many cute little stickers that you can add to your album. It also has some little word stickers that you can add and some alphabet stickers and some washi strips. So here I'm just using the little flip-flops there and just adding them to the sand. And then I'm going to take the Sunny Days foam sticker. Now these foam stickers are also amazing. They are thick like chipboard would be, but the feel and the texture is a very smooth texture and they do add some nice dimension to your projects. And then I'm going to take these two cloud ephemera pieces and add them to the top of my scene. And I'm also going to use these heart foam stickers and add a few hearts in the scene as well. And I really love all of the colors and how this is turning out. So I'm going to add that entire layer to the front of a white piece of cardstock. Remember that white cardstock is just measured at six and one quarter by eight and five eighths. And then I'll glue that down just to have a little bit of a white border peeking out of the edges of that cardstock. And then I'm going to take this entire sheet and it's going to go right there on the front of the album so it will fit perfectly on the brown part of that album because I cut it to the exact size. So I'm just using my art glitter glue because it is a very strong glue and it will hold up very well on these albums. And I did choose to use that yellow album, but you can choose any color album that you want to. There are so many different colors of these snap binder albums, and I will have a link to all of these products down in the description box. I take a piece of twine and wrap it around the album a few times, and I put it there right where the yellow part of that binder meets with the pattern paper. And I just wrap that around and then tie it in a bow. And I'll trim off 
some of the ends just so they're not so long, but I do leave some of the length to the ends of that bow. I will also add another heart to the center of that bow, but since it's sticky, I'm just using a powder tool to remove some of the stickiness, and then I take my hot glue gun, add a little drop of hot glue to the center of that bow, and then add that heart right to the middle. And that will complete that cover, and I'm going to move on and take out some of these pieces of paper from the 6x8 pad. These pieces are the large pieces that have the large um, pictures on them. You really can't use the front sides of them for cards, but you can use them as other pages in your album. So I have this Hello Summer page, and that's from the 6x8 pad again, and then I just backed it up on some white cardstock that measures six and one eighth by eight and one eighth and I'm going to add it there to the inside cover of the album and I'm also going to take this scalloped sticker from the 12 by 12 collection kit from the sticker page and I'm going to add it there at the bottom. I was trying to decide if I wanted to put it at the top and at the bottom but I just ultimately decided to go with just putting it at the bottom. I thought it really didn't look good there at the top so I moved that entire sheet up towards the top of the album so that only a little bit of that craft is displaying underneath and then I will have that extra space at the bottom that's going to actually be covered up by that scalloped border sticker. So I'm just going to add it there and then I'm going to trim off the end and that will be the inside cover of my album. Next I want to show you how to add pages to your snap album. So first I'm going to take out everything that's included in these binder rings and I'm just going to set those aside. So to add my first page I'm just going to take three sheets of the 6x8 paper. So it's from the 6x8 paper pad. I'm going to take my first sheet and I'm going to trim one half inch off the side. It doesn't matter which side, it could be the left or the right. And then you're going to take out your scoring tool and put it in your scoring tool so that the short side of the paper is at the top and you're going to score at one half inch along the right side of that paper and then just fold down that score. And then you're going to take your tape, your double sided tape, and just flip that piece of paper over and add the double sided adhesive along that scored edge. And then you'll remove the backing of the double-sided adhesive and then just line up that edge of the first sheet with a full size of the 6x8 piece of pattern paper and then just press that down and now you have a little interactive page with a flap. Next you're going to take the third piece of 6x8 paper and you're going to put it in your trimmer with the short edge of the paper along the top and then you're going to cut this to four and a half inches and then you're going to take out your scoring tool you're going to put it in your scoring tool so that the short edge is along the top and score one half inch on the right side then just fold at that score line and you'll also add double-sided adhesive tape to the back of that scored paper and then remove the backing off of the double-sided tape and then with the other sheet open, you're going to line up the right edges and then add the smaller flap to the middle flap. Next, you're going to punch holes in the side. And to do that, you're going to take one of the page protectors that came in the album and just line it up along the edge. Take your hole punch, line up the holes that are in the page protector, and then just punch the holes. So now you have the holes punched in on the left side. And now you can go ahead and add photo mats here if you like. Photo mats are obviously optional. You don't have to use them. I did use them on some of the pages in my album. Album. So for this first page, I did add a photo mat that will fit a four by six photo. So it's measured at four and an eighth by six and one eighth. And then the middle section's a little bit smaller. I did add two photo mats there that will fit three by four photos. So those are each measured at three and an eighth by four and an eighth. 
And then for the third section, which is just a little bit smaller as well, I just added some room there for some 2 by 2 photos, and those photo mats are measured 2 and 1 8 by 2 and 1 8. And again, the photo mats portion is optional if you wanted just to add your pictures straight onto this um, pages, you can do that without adding the photo mats. And then I go ahead and flip this um, to the other side and I add another photo mat here and this is for a 3 by 4 photo so that photo mat is 3 and 1 8 by 4 and 1 8 and then I'm also going to add a little flap on the next um, page and this is one of the square cut aparts from the 12 by 12 pad so I did cut it from the 12 by 12 pad and then I scored it at a half inch along the top and then I'm just putting some double sided adhesive tape on the back of that score and then adding it there to that page and then that little flap will lift up so that you can add two photos underneath that and then I add another photo mat for a 3 by 4 photo so that white cardstock measures 3 and 1 8 by 4 and an eighth. And then on the very back side of that, I add room for a much larger photo. So if I wanted to put a five by seven here, I can. So this photo mat is measured at five and one eighth by seven and one eighth. So there is the page for my album. I'm going to repeat this process and create another page. So here are the three six by eight pages that I've chosen to use from the six by eight paper pad. I'm going to start out with this Hello Summer page and because this page is directional and there are words here on it, I want to make sure that I only cut a half inch from the left hand side. So previously I said it didn't matter which side you're cutting from, but here I want to make sure that I am cutting from the left just because it does have the words and I want to make sure that those words stay centered. So just trim off one half inch from the left hand side. And then take out your scoring tool and you're going to take that same piece of paper, place it so the short edge is at the top of your scoring tool and you're going to score it one half inch from the right side. Next flip that sheet over and then you're going to add some double sided adhesive tape to the back side of that score. And after you add the double sided adhesive tape, just remove the backing of that tape and you're going to line it up with a second sheet of pattern paper, just lining them up there on the right edges and then press that down really well and then you have your second page. Now the top right of that Hello Summer paper is ripped. So I decided in order to fix that rip, I'm just going to take this blue strip of paper and I'm going to add it there to the right side. And that blue strip of paper is from the same exact sheet, it's just the reverse of that. It's that half inch that I cut off initially. Next I will take a third piece of pattern paper and I will trim it to four and a half inches. Make sure that you put that in your trimmer on the short side and then trim it four and a half inches and then put that in your scoring tool on the short side and score one half inch from the right and then just fold that score and then you'll also put the double sided adhesive on the back side of that. And the double sided adhesive tape that I'm using, I think it's just a quarter inch tape. I could have went a little bit thicker, maybe used a half inch, but that's what I had on hand. And then I'm just lining that up, making sure the right edges there are even, and then just adding that page. Next, I'm gonna punch holes in the side. So I'm gonna take another one of the page protectors that came in the actual album, line it up there with the edge, the left edge of the page that we just made and then just punch the holes. So just use the holes that are in the page protector as guides and then punch your holes with a hole punch. Next I'm going to add some of my photo mats. Very similar to what we did in the previous page. So again I have a photo mat for a 4x6 there on the left. The 4x6 photo mat is cut to 4 and 1 8 by 6 and 1 8. I also have two smaller photo mats on the blue page. Those are for three by four photos. So for a three by four photo, you can cut your photo mats to three and one eighth by four and an eighth. 
Now again, it's optional if you want to add your photo mats, and you may not want to even add your photo mats until you know what actual pictures and what sizes of pictures you want to include in your album. In my case, I decided to go ahead and add them initially, and then I can always then just print my pictures to size based on based on the photo mats that I included in the album. So then on this page, I have room for some smaller two by two photos. And then these photo mats are two and one eighth by two and one eighth. And I go ahead and add those there. And then I flip that over. And then for this page, it's another three by four. So I cut that white cardstock to three and one eighth by four and an eighth. And then I'm using a 4x4 cut apart that I'm scoring at a half inch from the top. And then a 3x4 cut apart that I'm also scoring a half inch from the top. And I will go ahead and add double sided adhesive tape to the back of that score. And then I will add those to this page here. And the fun thing about using these cut aparts on these pages is that you can actually add more than one photo. So you can have a photo underneath. So when you lift the flap, you can have one on the actual flap and you can also have a photo on the page itself. Next, I want to show you how you can take one of the pages that already came in the album and add an interactive element to it. So here I have one of the six by eight papers. This is the one with the rainbow. I'm just cutting a half inch off the top of that paper and then I'm going to put it in my scoring tool and score a one half inch on the right side. Then I'm going to flip that over, add some double sided tape to the back of that score and then I'm going to attach it to this yellow and white polka dot paper. That piece of um, paper actually came with the album. So I'm just adding a flap using the six by eight paper pad just by trimming it down and scoring it on the side and that adds a nice interactive element to that page. Next, I'm going to add some photo mats, and I have two for some three by four photos. So those two photo mats are cut to three and an eighth by four and an eighth, and I'm just adding them to that yellow with the white polka dot paper. And then on the right side, I'm going to add another photo mat, and that's going to be for a four by six photo. So my photo mat is measured at four and one eighth by six and one eighth. So you can choose to, if you wanted smaller photos or larger photos, you can decide how big you want your photo mats for those pages. And then on the back side of that, I'm just gonna add two more flaps. So these are the four by six cut aparts from the 12 by 12 paper collection. And I just scored the top one a half inch on the left side. And then the cut apart that's on the bottom, I scored a half inch on the right side. And then I just, here I'm using glue, but you can use the double-sided adhesive tape. I'm not sure why I switched to the glue, but you can use either one. And then just add that to the back of that score and then press it down on the page. So you can fit two photos under each one of those flaps. Next, I'm gonna take this 12 by 12 sheet of tags and I'm going to just use my paper trimmer and cut all of these tags apart. That way I have them to use in my album, but I'm also going to be making a page that has an interactive element on the page using these tags. So I went ahead and cut all of them up. So here they are. And then these are the four that I'm gonna use for my interactive element on my page. So I'm just gonna put each one in my scoring tool and score a half inch from the top of the tag. And then I'm gonna flip each one over and add some double-sided adhesive tape to the back of the tag above the score line. And because my tape, I'm using the, I think it's the quarter inch tape, it's so thin, I do add two pieces of tape to go across the top just to make sure that it adheres to my album page very well. And then I'm gonna take my album page. So this page actually came with the album and I'm going to lay these on the album page and then I will position them where I want them and then eventually adhere them. So I did choose two pink tags and then two of the white tags and I'm just laying the colors opposite each other so I don't have two pink at the top or two white at the bottom. I have the pink diagonal and then the white diagonal 
just wanted to stick with the similar color scheme so I didn't have too many colors on this page. So once I have them where I want them to go, I'll just remove the adhesive backing and then I will add them to the page. And what's nice about including tags on your page is that it's another interactive element. So when the tag is flipped up, you can have a photo on the top of the tag and underneath the tag directly onto the page. So you can technically put eight photos on this page. So once I have all of them adhered, I go ahead and take some twine. I tie it in a bow and I do that four times. So I do have four bows. And then I will take some hot glue and add a dot of the hot glue to the center of that tag and then add the bow right to the top of the hot glue. So underneath these tags, you can add a photo that measures two by three inches. And if you wanted to add a photo to the back of the tag, you can, or you can also use that as a journaling spot. It's simply up to you. I'm gonna flip that page over and I have this piece of pattern paper from the 12 by 12 paper pad. And I'm gonna add this to my yellow and white striped paper. Just add that down the middle. And that measures across for the width, it's six and three quarter inches. And then I'm just gonna trim off the excess. So that'll give me the six and three quarter inches. And then tall, it's about six inches tall. So I'm just gonna add glue, just keep that down. And since I covered up the holes on the side, I'm going to flip that over so that I could see the holes. And then I'm just gonna use my hole punch and then punch the holes in that page. Next, I'm gonna move on to my next interactive page in my album. And I'm taking this paper that is from the six by eight paper pad. And I'm trimming one inch from the side of that paper. And then I will put that paper in my scoring tool and I will score one half inch along the top of that pattern paper. And then I will just fold that at the score to give it a good crease, add some double-sided adhesive tape to the back. And then I'll add that paper to one of the pages that came in the snap binder. This is the yellow and white striped pages. So I'll just line up my pattern paper with the top edge of the snap binder page. And now I have a nice flap. So an interactive flap. And then I'm gonna take this 12 by 12 piece that came in the 12 by 12 collection paper pad. I'm going to cut out this lemonade stand, so I'm just fussy cutting it. I figured I'd go ahead and decorate this page since I already know what I want to put on here. So I'm going to go ahead and just lay everything out. So I have the lemonade stand and several ephemera pieces. Just going to create a cute little scene on the front of this flap. If you didn't want to add ephemera to this, you can always add a photo mat and add a picture to the front. That's up to you. But I thought this lemonade stand would be really, really cute on this flap and also going to add that word chill which is from the foam sticker pack from the Sunkiss collection. I really love those foam stickers. I love the words, how large they are. I love the smooth texture of the sticker and all of the dimension that it does add. I like to add the foam stickers to the fronts of the pages rather than underneath a flap because they have so much dimension. I wouldn't want to put them underneath a flap just because the flap would not be able to rest closed snugly. So here I open the flap and I'm just going to add some photo mats. So I have two photo mats for some three by four pictures, which are cut to three and an eighth by four and an eighth. And then the photo mat on the top will be cut for a four by six photo, which will be measured four and an eighth by six and an eighth. On the back side of that page, I have this rainbow paper that's cut to six inches wide by five and a quarter inch tall. And then I score a half inch from the top, add some double-sided adhesive tape to the back of that score. And then I'm gonna add that to the top of that yellow and white striped paper. So I'm just gonna put it in the center of that page, line it up at the top, and then press down to add that to that striped paper. And then I'm going to take this Sunny Days ephemera piece and only add glue to the top where it says Sunny and then add that towards the bottom of that flap. And then you can cut your photo mats down to fit underneath these flaps. Unfortunately, I did not show that process on this particular page. 
For another one of the pages in my album, I am going to be using these 3x4 cut aparts from the 12x12 paper pad, scoring them at a half inch from the top of the cut apart, and I'm going to adhere them to this yellow and white polka dot page from the snap binder. So just adding some double sided adhesive to the back of that cut apart at the top of the score and then just adding them there. And I am going to put them in a diagonal so you can actually put a picture underneath and you can do some journaling on the back side as well. And then I'm going to flip this over and on this back side I am going to add a large photo mat and I'm going to make a photo mat so that it will hold a 4x6 photo. So that blue pattern paper is from the 12 by 12 paper pad and it's four and a half by six and a half inches. And the white cardstock is four and one eighth by six and one eighth. Next, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to add a pocket to a page. And this six by eight pattern paper is just, it's a piece from the six by eight paper pad. I did not cut it down, I just used the entire piece. And then I have a four by six cut apart from the 12 by 12, and it's perfect for the pocket size. So I just add glue to the left, right, and bottom of that cut apart, and then add it to the six by eight pattern paper. And the great thing about doing a pocket like this is that I didn't have to cut any paper with the exception of just cutting that shine bright cut apart out of the 12 by 12 sheet. And then this page will fit perfectly on this chipboard page from the album. So I just add glue to the back and add it directly to the chipboard album page. And then on the back side of that page, I just take another piece from the 6x8 paper pad. I, again, I did not cut it down because those pages fit perfectly on these album pages and just add it to the back side. Moving on, I take another 6x8 piece of pattern paper and add it directly to another piece of the chipboard pages. So just add it directly on there with some glue. And then I take these two three by four cut aparts from the 12 by 12 pattern paper pad, and I'm going to add them to my page with glue flat against the page. Now, if you wanted to, you could score them a half inch from the top and then just add to the page that way, like we did in previous pages and add a flap so that you can add pictures underneath. But I chose just to add them flat, just as decoration with no interactive element on here. So now I have these two three by four cut aparts and then I can add two more three by four photos in the opposite corners. And then on the back side of this, just take another page from the six by eight pad and then add glue and then add it to this um, chipboard album. Now if you didn't have the six by eight pad you can always take a 12 by 12 piece of paper cut it down to six by eight and it would do the same thing and you can just add it there to the page. I'm going to add some photo mats to this floral page. So I have this pattern paper that I'm going to cut down so that it measures three and a half by four and a half inches and I'm going to cut two photo mats from this and then I'll take some white cardstock and cut it down to three and a quarter by four and a quarter and I will do that twice because these pieces will be on top of the pattern paper. So I'm just adding another layer there. So I'm going to go ahead and add the white cardstock to the top of the blue pattern paper and I wish that I would have put um, the blue pattern paper cut it a little bit larger just so that you can see a little bit more of that pattern around the white but nevertheless it still has a little bit of a border so it has some contrast there from the floral print. I'm moving on to my last chipboard page and I'm using the six by eight sheet of paper, adding it directly to the front of the chipboard page. And that red strip was actually a strip that I cut off at the beginning of this video when I made an additional page for my album. So this strip measures one and a half inches and then that's the width and then the height is six inches. So I just add it there to the side. And this is a fun technique to do if you wanna get rid of some of that extra chipboard on the left side, you can just add another strip here so that the paper goes all the way to the edge of that chipboard. So now I need to have the holes punched. So I'm gonna flip this over 
And before I add an actual page to this side, I'm going to punch my holes. So I'm just using my crocodile here, just finding the hole and then punching that. And it's important you do it before you add the pattern paper to the back side. That way you can see where the hole is. So I'm going to take some cut-aparts. Um, I have a 4x4 cut-apart that's from the 12x12 pad and I just score it at one half inch from the top as well as this 3x4 cut-apart. I do the same thing and then I just add glue to the top of the score on the back side and then add that to the page. So again, this is a nice way of being able to add a picture underneath the flap if you wanted to add journaling behind um, the actual cut apart you can or you can actually add another picture there it's up to you so then I flip this over I add another 6 by 8 sheet from the 6 by 8 paper pad and then just to be consistent with the front of that I can either leave it alone and let the chipboard with the holes show on the right but I decided to go ahead and take the strip since I had it laying around this was from something previously that we cut and I go ahead and add it there. It's the same size as this red one. So it's one half inch wide by six inches tall. And then I just cut those holes. Moving on for another page, I'm taking this six by eight piece of pattern paper and I'm going to cut one half inch off the top, which is off of the short side of that page. And then I'm going to take this page and I'm going to put it in my scoring tool and I'm just going to score one half inch from the right side. And then I'm just going to fold on that score, add a piece of double sided tape to the back of that score. And I'm going to add this to one of the pages that came in the snap binder. This is one of the lined pages, the lined white pages. And I'm just going to put it in the center of the right side of that lined white page, make sure it's even with that page on the right, and then just press that down. And then I'm just going to add something fun and decorative to the front. This is the 4x6 cut apart that came in the 12x12 paper pad and I'm going to add it to a blue piece of pattern paper that's four and a half by six and a half and just add that to the front of that sun paper. And then that's just an interactive flap that will open up which will allow you to add more pictures or journaling to the inside. Next I have this grid paper. It's the white grid paper that came in the snap binder and I have this sun pattern paper which is a leftover piece from the 12 by 12 sheet that I used for the cover of my album. That measures five and three quarter inches wide and then roughly six inches tall and then I have this scrap polka dot paper which is one inch wide by six inches tall which I put there on the side and then I just flip that page over find the holes and punch the holes on that page and you want to make sure you punch those holes before you decorate the back side so I'm going to do the same thing with the back side taking a piece of paper using the same measurements the pattern paper is five and three quarter inches wide by about six inches tall and then that scrap paper measures one inch wide by six inches tall. Just add it to the side to fill in that white space and then flip that over and then add the holes. So next I want to show you how you can use the page protectors that came in the snap binder to create page layouts in those um, page protectors. So the page protector that I'm going to be formatting a page layout for eight and a quarter by six and a quarter. So that's the one that you can actually put a full sheet inside. So I'm taking some white cardstock and just cutting it down to six and a quarter by eight and three eighths. And that's going to be the actual back of the mat and the pattern paper will go on top of that. So then I'll take a 12 by 12 pattern paper. I'm just going to snip off that edge that we don't need. And I'm going to cut this paper right down the middle at six inches. And that's going to give me two pieces that I can work with. So for each piece, I'm going to then trim it, just turn it in my paper trimmer and cut it at eight and a quarter inches. And I'm going to do that for both of those pieces. So now I can use one pattern on the front and the opposite pattern on the back. 
So I'm going to go ahead and adhere those down to the white cardstock. And then those extra scraps that came off of that cut, you can just save for layers on that particular layout. I don't think I end up using them on this particular layout, but I do end up saving them um, just in case I decide to use them with another layout that I do. So for the back cover of the album, I have a piece of white cardstock that I cut down to six and an eighth by eight and a half. And then I'm gonna take a piece of pattern paper and I'm gonna cut that down to six by six and three eighths. And then that pattern paper will be adhered to the white cardstock. And that will be adhered to the back inside cover of the album. Next, I wanna show you how you can add an interactive flap to one of the pocket pages in the actual page protector. So take a piece of scrapbook paper and cut it down to six by eight. And then once you trim that down to six by eight inches, you're going to put that in your um, scoring tool and you're gonna score it at four inches and then just fold at your score line. And then once you fold at your score line, this is actually the perfect size to fit in one of the four by six pockets on your pocket page protectors. And when you lift it up, you can actually put a, a picture inside. You can put one at the top and bottom of the inside. You can also decorate the front or put a picture on the front as well. But before we do that, and I show you how to do that, you're gonna actually put this back in your paper trimmer and you're just gonna trim off a tiny bit off of one of the ends, I would say probably about a half inch. That's what I did. If you wanted to do more, you can. So I'm just gonna finish the snip here with my scissors, and then you're gonna see how you can actually fold this and fit this in the four by six slot on your page protector. So that gives you more room for photos or for journaling in these pocket pages. So now I'm just going to show you the process of me putting pictures in the album and then just decorating the album with different embellishments, ephemera. Here's some of the stickers from the sticker pad. So I do want to mention that my pictures are different sizes. So I do have some two by two pictures. I have some two by three pictures. I will have some three by four pictures, four by six, even some five by seven pictures in here. And the smaller photos, like these pictures particularly, are the three by fours. I do use an app on my phone called Pic Collage and I just format those pictures for a f uh, four by six photo. And some of the grids that you're able to use in that Pic Collage app, you're able to um, get like two three by fours out of one four by six photo. Or if you're doing some two by two photos, you can get like six two by twos out of one four by six photo. And then those four by six photos can be printed like at Walgreens or Costco or any of the stores that do um, printing. So that's how you can actually get your smaller picture sizes, which are so much fun and you can actually get a lot of pictures in these albums. And I was able to include 99 pictures in this album, but I could have included a lot more. For example, on this page it says sunny days, I could have put a picture there on the top of that flap and on the top of that flap where the bicycle is, but I chose to decorate it. And some of the flaps I chose just to put ephemera underneath, where I could have put pictures underneath some of the flaps. So you definitely could have put a whole lot more. In fact, you could also get some of the refills for the page protectors and include more refills in here because this album could hold some more as well. So I am using a lot of the stickers from the sticker pack to decorate these. These stickers are small enough that you can put on the edges of these photos. You can also put a lot of these little sayings on these photos, which are so super cute, I just love. And here is where I'm actually putting some ephemera on the back of these tags. If you wanted to, you could have put smaller pictures on the back of those tags, but I just didn't have any more pictures to include, so I chose just to use some ephemera. You could also stick some more pictures in the pocket there. 
and here I'm just using some of the number stickers but this is actually an additional um, number sticker pack from Simple Stories because I wanted to use the yellow alphabet stickers rather than the color that were included in the Sunkist collection. So here is one of the tags from the frames and tags and I just cut it in half, put it underneath that picture and then again some more stickers here from the sticker pack. And then some more of the um, puffy stickers and then some more stickers. Now here I am putting some of the stickers directly on the page protector, which is no big deal. Just like with this, these are some stickers that I'm spelling out the word paradise and putting directly on the page protector. And when I do this, I'm just starting in the middle just to try to make it centered. I think in the end it turned out not even being too centered. I ended up putting some flowers on the ends. And then here just some more ephemera pieces on those pictures. And then you could also, if you wanted to, include more of these insert pages, which I showed you how to do at the beginning of the video, to create extra pages for your pictures. And then here I'm just putting in the word favorites so I can write my favorite summer memories here. And you can also use these white pages with the lines just for some journaling. So here I'm going to number these, one, two, three, four, and five, so I can go back and add with my own handwriting five summer favorites that I had during this summer vacation. Here I'm putting a little journaling tag on here so I can go back and add some more journaling later on. And then just adding some more pictures and ephemera. Here's a foam sticker that I add to the side. Some more stickers from the sticker book. And then here I'm decorating the front of this 4x6 cut apart with some ephemera and then some more stickers. I do add an extra page protector that I got in a refill pack and you'll see that here right here on the right hand side. It has some smaller 2x2s at the top and at the bottom. I wanted to include some more of those 2x2 two two cut aparts and 2x2 two two pictures so I did pick that one up from an extra refill pack and I will also link that down below as well as all of the products that I used in this video will be linked down below in the description. If you like this video please Please give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe and turn on your bell notifications if you want to see more tutorials from me. Thank you so much for watching everyone and have a great day. Bye bye.